This program has been brought to you thanks to the generous contributions of our patrons on Patreon. Your patronage is greatly appreciated. And for more content like this, be sure to check out the Modern Alchemist channel on Patreon. Greetings, and welcome to the Modern Alchemist channel. I'm Aubrey Forrest, the Modern Alchemist, and this is Ask an Alchemist. Today on Ask an Alchemist, we have a question from Martin, who writes to us about people and the tree of life. Welcome to Human Alchemy 101. Martin writes and asks, Good morning, and great picture. In your experience with groups greater than two, such as families or teams, do you observe each member to embody primarily one sphere to complete the tree? Is this optimal for a group's functionality? Great question, Martin. I've actually observed this process myself and have had to ask, am I just seeing things? Or do we actually seem to align ourselves to certain mythological archetypes? The fact that each sphere has a corresponding planetary ruler and that each planet has a domain over certain astrological signs really drives home the idea that those who conceived the tree originally really had things dialed in relative to human behavioral dynamics, which is what astrology really is all about. What is truly remarkable to me is how these relationships are so flexible, depending upon the number of contributing family members and the context of their interaction, so that sometimes I fulfill the role of the moon, I being a cancer and the moon being the ruling planet over that sign, while others I am clearly in the role of the sun, or even Mars when things really need to get done. Similarly, my wife moves around the spheres of the tree, as do my son and daughters, now all adults, depending on the context of our interaction. Topics like this are another great example of material that can be used during a productive meditation. Visualize the tree, then consider the members of your group and ask yourself, based on your understanding of the nature and character of the planetary influences in each sphere, where do they stand? You'll quickly discover that if you choose a sphere that is ill-suited to the individual in question, the sphere will reject them as they are not vibrating at its level, giving you the sense of tr trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. You will be surprised to discover that the paths leading to the spheres your family member or teammates occupy are descriptive of how best to relate to them when approaching their sphere. This is one of the many reasons why the tarot can be your friend, for the true augury of the device is to aid in the description of the people with whom one interacts daily. I've discovered when working in business that one does not need to assign people to a particular sphere as that a group dynamic will handle that for you within the first 10 to 15 minutes of interaction. Sometimes a group might be composed of only three people. In instances like that, I've discovered that the prima materia, or three primes, of salt, mercury, and sulfur might manifest first, followed by a manifestation of their elementary expression, and then their sphere. Groups of four will often distill into the four elements first, and then assume their position on the tree later. The key to doing and using this as a sociological and psychological advantage is to be freaking flexible. These are human beings, not numbers or machines, and people are complicated. Your immediate urge may be to quickly categorize people at first, then see if they develop as you predict. Avoid this urge. Instead, ignore everything you know about the tree, astrology, tarot, etc., and allow your family, friends, and teammates to manifest who they are for you first, and then see how their particular peg fits into the pattern of the tree. Doing things this way allows one to have a sense of discovery rather than categorization when dealing with others and brings a real magic 
to the situation as you begin to see how the pattern of our lives interacts and intersects so that we may seem to live out our ancient myths and legends in the course of our daily lives, just on a much smaller scale. Now, your second question is, is this optimal for a group's functionality? I know for a fact that there are groups like the International Alchemy Guild that are organized directly around the pattern of the tree. And here's a link for you. And one is provided in the dialogue box describing this video. This is done because there is a natural order to things that human beings tend to follow when they are organized into groups. Basically, human beings tend to specialize. And the tree stands as witness to that fact in the way that each sphere is ordered. I hope that helps. Great question, as always. And that concludes today's Ask an Alchemist. I'm Aubrey Forrest, the Modern Alchemist, and I'll be talking to you soon.